Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou School Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my new book, Superior, and it's about mindset, mental fitness, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is the highly respected founder and CEO of Made for Success Publishing. He is Brian Heathman, and today we are going beyond publishing. Hey, Brian, welcome to Beyond the Line. Rusty, it's a pleasure to be on your show today. Brian, you are my national publisher and potentially my international publisher, and we are super close friends. I mean, you are just such an incredible person. I love how you, you're you in it for the best interest of me or your authors. Um, you tell us things that sometimes we don't want to hear, but you're so honest, and I absolutely love you for that. And Brian, can you First of all, share with us why you started Made for Success Publishing. Yeah, well, that's a great question, Rusty. So it was about uh, 20 years ago. I went to a uh, retreat, and I just happened to have a bunkmate at the retreat who was the keynote speaker for that particular gathering. And we uh, hit it off after spending a weekend together and um, got together at a local Starbucks for about six months and talked about putting a business together. And then finally, um, I, I kind of broke down and uh, we decided to give it a try. And we um, decided that we were going to call the top 100 professional speakers in the world and license their keynote speeches for electronic and physical distribution to end users. And it was a brand new idea at the time. And uh, we were fortunate enough to get these products. We built about six products as audio CDs in 15 packs. We built this giant box for these 15 CDs and sold those into Costco stores. And literally the company made for success became an overnight success. It was a, it was a kind of a rare occurrence. But we had national distribution for our products. We were sending uh, very significant royalty checks out to these uh, out to these big name um, authors and speakers, and uh, that was kind of the the whole start of Made for Success. But Rusty, here's the thing that uh, is kind of funny about this story, is that we started a publishing company completely backwards. So what does that mean? So we decided to start a publishing company that focused on audio. And if you, you know, fast forward to today, audio products, when you look at all the sales within the book publishing business, which is a $27 billion business here in the U.S., right? So it's pretty significant. Um, it does 15% of its revenues in audio. Okay. So here we are, we're running this company with this big success and all it does is sells audio. So then this brand new thing comes along. This is back in 2008, 2009, called the ebook or the electronic book. And we decided to jump in with both feet on the whole ebook space. And we started putting hundreds of ebooks out on the market. And we got good at that early on. And then when you add the audiobook at 15% of the market and the ebook at 20% of the market, that's about what? 35% of the of the whole slice of the pie. So then uh, about four or five years later, we decided to get into the physical book business. And that's where we are today. Today we're more of a uh, we're known, made for success, it's known as a physical book publisher that does ebooks and audiobooks extremely well. So that's the niche that we've created. And we focused on, you know, content like, uh, you know, more uh, self-improvement content, uh, professional development content. We do a lot of memoirs, uh, what they call autobiographies, where you write something about yourself. Um, 
And then just recently, we got into children's books. And we've got some, I've got some crazy stories about children's books that we've uh, done recently. In fact, uh, I'll even show you one. This is the first children's book that we did off the shelf. It's called What Day Are You? And this is for a uh, author, uh, Rusty, that's local to you, right there in Honolulu, Steve Sombrero. Um, and he had this vision for this story about a turtle uh, named Moko that lives up at Laniakea Beach on the North Shore. And it's just a heartwarming, wonderful story um, that's designed to help people live in the present. Okay. And Steve's motive for writing this book was to help prevent teen suicide. So it's just a it's just a fun, you know, this this work is is just been really interesting and interesting people, you know, come our way. And Rusty, I mean, holy smokes, you've got a you've got a fascinating story yourself. So anyway, so that's kind of a little bit of the backstory on, you know, what I do at Made for Success and how it came to be about 20 years ago. Well, Brian, I absolutely love Steve Sombrero and, and his new book. Um, but one of the, the keys to Made for Success is your assistant, Alice Kirkwood. I mean, she is absolutely brilliant and she gets things done. W what do you admire most about Alice? Well, let's see. So Alice is a project manager, um, and she's been with the company for about four years. She came in um, as a friend of my wife. Um, that in fact, they're both tennis players together. And Alice has really developed into being a, a, a real key role here at Made for Success. She's got a superpower. Um, and uh, she's able to exercise that superpower in the work that she does here at Made for Success. So she used to work for Microsoft uh, many years ago. I, I live in Seattle, and um, a lot of people that live in the region of Seattle where I live are all former Microsoft. In fact, I'm former Microsoft myself, one of the reasons why I moved back to this particular area in Seattle. Um, but Alice was working with some really big personalities there working on some uh, fairly significant projects and developed some skills early on in her career. Um, now she's able to um, uh, to manage project management, conversations, phone calls, scheduling with um, some very significant uh, personalities. Um, so it's funny because when you work in the book book business, especially the book business, working with professional speakers. Speakers have a couple of common denominators. One, um, they typically have pretty big ego. And, and I'm not saying that's bad. It's just a prerequisite. Because if you're going to, let's say, walk out on a stage one day at uh, uh, you know, the Hilton Hawaiian Convention Center, and there's 2,000 people in the room, well, you have to hold the attention of all 2,000 people right there in the palm of your hand, which means that you got to be pretty good, right? You've got to be a really good talker. You got to be a really good communicator. You got to have the right ideas. And not many people can pull that off, right? So, so everybody that Alice works with has, has you know, a pretty significant ego. The second thing is <clears throat> if they're a, like a, like a media personality or, a, or a, speaker, um, they're also fairly um, what I call type A, meaning they're drivers. You know, they want to get stuff done. You know, we don't have much time. Let's go, 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 go. All right. So there's not many people that I know um, that can work consistently all day long with people that have that kind of personality, right? But Alice is able to do it well. So um, yeah, so she's in a, an amazing part. But her superpower, Rusty, is what I call the gift of woo. Meaning she's able to get on the phone and uh, she's got this personality type where she's uh, able to talk to people and, um, and, uh, and, and, and really woo them. So it's a, it's a wonderful combination. Brian, I completely agree. I absolutely love Alice. And you uh, promote the Zig Ziglar brand. You promote Tom Hopkins. You also promote Brian C. Uh, Brian Brian Smith and David C. Williams, who are my friends, and they're incredible people. I mean, I love that you know they have such an impact with their books and their keynote speaking. 
What do you look for? What's the biggest thing that you look for when working with authors? Well, you know, as a book publisher, um, we're a little bit jaded, let's call it. You know, our our goal is to produce a book that's going to be an evergreen bestseller. And Rusty, is there any evergreen bestseller that you can think of, like a book that just sells like a, you know, every month after month and month, it just sells tons of copies? What's the first book that comes to your head? Well, that might be uh, what, Good to Great. <laughs> yeah, I was hoping you'd say that. Okay. So um, Good to Great, written by Jim Collins. I think the book was written about 25 years ago. Well, um, the beauty of that book is that, you know, when I was, uh, you know, a young business person, I was reading everything I could to learn all the different skills that you have to learn. Um, so, you know, I wasn't a leader at the time. I wasn't a CEO. I was a, a salesman. Um, but I found the concepts in things like good to great really interesting because I knew that at some stage of my career, I had to figure out this whole leadership thing. Because at that time, I wouldn't say that I figured out the whole sales thing, uh, but I was trained. So I had so I had some skills there. But when you're a publisher, you're looking for these books that have the potential. And so, you know, one of the books, one of the first books that we published was this one by a guy named Zig Ziglar. And when, um, you know, when you look at the world of professional speakers, back when I started, there were two speakers that everybody came to me and said, I want to be the next Zig Ziglar or I want to be the next Tony Robbins. If I had a nickel for every time I heard that, I would be rolling a nickel. Um, <clears throat> but eventually, we ended up uh, picking up the whole catalog of, and not the whole catalog, but a significant catalog of Zig Ziglar's um, write, written materials and his recorded materials. And it's this is a good you know thing for us to look for because Zig Ziglar was also famous, so people recognize. The name now he's passed now i think he's you know probably been you know passed away for over a decade um but his name still like lives on oddly enough this is one of those evergreen bestsellers the thing just sits there and churns and churns and and every you know every month we ship out books to readers all over the world uh well, for brian that. i got i gotta say zig ziglar is amazing i mean what he's done i mean he's definitely legendary and um, I want to ask you about one of my other super close friends that is close friends with you, uh, Scott Hogel. Uh, he, he wrote two books, Persuade and Divine Intelligence. And I, we love when you come to Hawaii and the three of us can get together at dinners and, and just hang out. But what's the biggest thing that you admire most about Scott? Well, it's kind of funny because, uh, you know, I, I get to Honolulu about once every six to eight weeks. That's kind of the rhythm that I'm on now. And my plane will touch down at around two o'clock. And then at five o'clock, Rusty, Scott, and I will sit down at a local restaurant and we'll enjoy a nice meal together. <clears throat> and it's always, it's always a blast. But Scott wrote um, this book called Persuade. This is his first book, and it's a sales book. And he did a uh, unusually good job on this and I and I say that having to having worked with uh you know a lot of highly motivated people who um are very excellent at their craft. But what Scott did is you know he reached out and he got a forward written by the top selling sales author uh of all time, a guy named Tom Hopkins. And he wrote a book called How to Master the Art of Selling, which is another one of those evergreen bestsellers. Um and we happened to publish that book as well. Uh, but then he went one step further and he got an endorsement from the second best-selling author in the sales lane, a guy named Brian Tracy. And Brian Tracy, he's legendary. I shadowed Brian Tracy uh, uh, in events. And I would go and, uh, you know, I, I rode in the backseat of the limousine with from one event venue to the next with Brian and, uh, you know, was able to ask him questions about his business and his philosophies. And then I would sit in the front row of the stadiums where he was keynoting and I would take notes because, you know, he's a masterful salesperson. In fact, you know, in fact, Rusty, I've taught you some of the techniques that uh, that I learned just watching Brian and just the way he would hold a book 
and show it. And just the, the, the value that he would convey about the intellectual property in the book, just by the way he held the book and by the way the light glinted off the, uh, off the beautiful cover. So um, there, there's all kinds of things that we can learn from these people. But, you know, uh, people like, uh, you know, like Scott, he went out and was able to get all these wonderful, all this wonderful social proof from the best in the world. And he wrote a really good book. It was funny because when Scott first came to me, he said, I want to hire a ghostwriter to write a book, to write my book, because I'm, you know, busy, you know, as the president of iHeartRadio, I don't have time to write a book. I've got this huge team. I've got all this responsibility. I've got my corporate, you know, folks that I've got to keep happy in New York and L.A. Um, and I said, OK, um, let's hire a writer. So we hire a writer. Both Scott and I read the first uh, couple submissions, and we weren't satisfied with the result. But in the meantime, I'd been receiving all this material from Scott. And so I, I turned to Scott and I said, hey, Scott, I said, you should really take a shot at writing this thing yourself. I think you'll find it rewarding. And here's a few tips on how to do it. And I spent two days with him offering up these tips. And uh, to his credit, he went out and he wrote a spectacular book. Um, and now um, he's made it a, a, a daily discipline of his just to write. So he'll sit down and he'll write, you know, six to 800 words every single day. And, <clears throat> you know, you know, over the years, I've noticed a couple different types of personality. There's some people, you know, and, and again, I'm a publisher, right? So I, I meet people who kind of go by, I write, therefore I am meaning they're writers. And then I meet another type of person who I speak, therefore I am. And they're, they're talkers, right? Scott and you, Rusty, are some of those rare breeds that are both, because you're, you're both a great communicator and a great speaker, very entertaining to watch and listen to, but also an exceptional writer, somebody who can tug at my heartstrings, somebody who can make me laugh, somebody who can motivate me to be better, somebody who can actually challenge me where my, where my hands start to sweat, you know, it's not to, but, but where it's, where I'm, you know, being challenged. And those, those are the books that I love to read. And, and Rusty, you're one of those authors. Well, Brian, you're too kind. <laughs> Thank you. And, and Brian, I know how much you love tennis. I mean, every time you come to Hawaii, hopefully, <laughs> you know, I try to, get you on the court, give you some tennis tips. I mean, it's amazing what you do um, and how busy you are with, you know, all your authors. And so many of your authors are also keynote speakers. And Brian, I want to ask you about um, Superior. You, I mean, you really encouraged me to, to, you know, write this third book, Superior. And um, I want to know your thoughts about what you think, how it is, and what the potential could be nationwide? Well, uh, first off, I have to say that there's a couple things about Superior that, that, that I would love to point out if we have a couple minutes. Um, the, book, the book is a, a significant book. Um, uh, I personally feel that a book, this book, Superior, creating a superior culture of excellence, has the potential to be more popular than good to great. Okay, and good to great is like a must read that everybody reads, but good to great focuses on you're good. What does it take to be great? What Rusty's book focuses on is um, how to create a superior culture. So we were having a conversation the other day and I had one of these aha moments. And you know, what does it look like in um, coaching? like what Rusty did with his 22-year uh, undefeated record for being the state champion. In that posture, he was sitting on the top of the mountain, and he had to make sure that his team was excellent or superior 22 years in a row. So he was defending the hill, okay, where all the other teams were coming to pick him off, right? Everybody was coming in to try to find that chink 
in the art in the armor uh, for those teams. But you know, you think about tennis, especially high school tennis. You know, you put your best kids on varsity, and they're usually your senior because they're the biggest and the fastest and most experienced. And then they all graduate, and then you bring in your junior and you put them on your varsity team, and they've got to do the same thing. So. To do that 22 years in a row, I mean, that's, you know, that doesn't happen by accident. So the material in this book is golden. The things that I honed in on, um, one were uh, mental fitness. Um, and, you know, I, I obviously understand physical fitness, and I think that's, that goes without saying. But mental fitness is something that's kind of near and dear. Uh, to my heart. So, um, you know, Rusty and I have had many conversations um, around his pool where we did our best work um, about talking about mental health. But Rusty said, I want to take it one step further. I don't want to talk about mental health. I want to talk about mental fitness. What can you do to be the best mentally that you possibly can? And the case study there is through uh, a good friend of Rusty's whose name is Sergeant Chris Kim with the Honolulu Police Department. And uh, at one stage in Sergeant Kim's uh, career, uh, you know, he went through a rough patch in his marriage and was seriously contemplating suicide. I said, Rusty brought him to dinner one night and said, you, you've got to meet uh, Sergeant Chris Kim. And, and he told us the story and it was pretty extraordinary. But a friend gave uh, Sergeant Chris Kim, a copy of Rusty's book, and there were there were uh, principles in that book that changed his trajectory and uh, made him uh, uh, compelled him to dig deep within himself and set aside his aspirations for suicide. So there's one thing on this mental fitness side. Um, you mentioned sports, Rusty, and yeah, I I do love tennis. And in fact, I was playing tennis um, just yesterday in North Carolina with a couple friends. And I've got a game that I like to play on the tennis court where it keeps track of your own unforced errors. Okay. And in tennis or in business or in life or in marriage, um, it's our unforced errors, which are often the, uh, you know, the, the things that cost us the most. So that was one idea that uh, Rusty got me thinking about was to not only look at my own unforced errors, but figure out how to tighten that up. And that's a principle that you'll read about in Superior. Um, and then the last thing that I really like about Superior is this idea of making everybody matter. So when you're creating a superior culture, and let's say it's, it's a work-related culture, it's not just about your employees. It's about your employee's spouse. It's about your employee's children. And, um, and you as the leader, you're kind of taking care of this, right? So um, there, there's a lot to take uh, into account and making sure that um, uh, you know, everyone matters is, is a very, very key idea. So there's some, there's some real gems in this book, Rusty. Well, Brian, you, you, you're much more than my publisher. You're my promoter. You're, you're my publicist. Now. But, but Brian, you, um, thank you so much. You, you did a special advanced printing of Superior for the people of Hawaii. And I had invited my book contributors to join me at Barnes & Noble for the big book signing. And I mean... The, it was an overwhelming response of people that came. I mean, it was a massive turnout. We were signing for over two hours. And what did you see when you were there uh, watching us? Well, uh, it's funny because in, you know, 20 years as a book publisher, <clears throat> I've done uh, many, many book signing events. Uh, I had this one author, a guy named Hal Elrod, who wrote um, uh, The Miracle Morning. And he called me up and he said, hey, I want to do a book signing tour in Seattle. And so we did all this, uh, all this work to put together the tour and to get people coming out. But Rusty, your, your book signing was kind of unique. Um, first off, I've got to get a, give a shout out. And I hope 
uh, she sees this episode, but Kaunani at uh, the Barnes & Noble in Ala Moana did the best job I have ever seen a store manager do with a bookstore signing event. It was, it was world-class work that she did. Um, and so she had everything all set up. She had this giant wall that was behind Rusty that was all uh, his book. And then Rusty was so ambitious that he invited five celebrity contributors who, uh, you know, when Rusty and I, we were spending the two and a half work, two and a half years working on this book, we came up with this clever idea that wouldn't it be cool to have contributors write portions of their experience um, and put it in the book? So he calls up Michael Bennett, who's a Super Bowl champion that, um, that uh, lives in the area. And Michael Bennett was good enough to come and sign autographs for free um, at this event. And then he had Stephen Hill, who's an actor in the new Magnum P.I., and he came and signed autographs. And then he had Glenn Medeiros, who's the uh, president of St. Louis, come out, and he was signing. And, uh, and then he had two other local CEOs uh, that, uh, that came in. One is a famous restaurateur, Ryan Tanaka. In, uh, in the area. So it was just a, an amazing event and that everybody that came was able to get autographed from all these people. Now, there were hundreds of people in the line. The line was so long that some people walked in and said, I'm not standing in that line. It's going to take too long. And they left. And, you know, I'm the book publisher. You know, I'm obviously there to sell books. My whole motto is, you know, uh, stack them high and watch them fly. Right. And so when I'm watching people walk out of the store because the line's too long, I'm like, oh, my gosh. And and Barnes and Noble, to their credit, how she was selling one point six books per minute. That's a lot. So it was like it was like a well oiled machine. Uh, it was just something beautiful to watch. But um, that that event was probably one of the better uh, by far the most superior book signing event that I've ever experienced. Well, thank you, Brian. I mean, that it was so, it was so exciting. I mean, I I love being on Living Eight Hundred Eight on Channel Two News. I mean, they were promoting pro, promoting that event very well. And Michael W. Perry on his KSSK Radio. Uh -huh. I mean, he was promoting that event. I mean, it was it was so special. People that were there know how special that was. And Brian, I really want to thank you for what you did to go above and beyond to do that special advanced printing for Hawaii. And literally, I want everybody in the world to get superior because if they do, the world will be a better place. And Brian, I want to thank you for joining me on the show today and sharing your insights. You are superior, and I want more Brian Heathmans in the world. Well, uh, Rusty, I just love the way that you end the book. You get to the last page of the book and you look at it and it says, be superior. I think that says it all. And as you think about being superior in your work life, in your marriage, in your personal life, that is what the game of significance is all about. And that's where a legacy is made. So this is just a just very, very exciting time. Thank you, Brian. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. I hope that Brian and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. We want to announce that ThinkTech Hawaii is moving into a new phase and will not be producing regular talk shows after April 30th. 
we will retain our website and YouTube channel and will accept new content on an ad hoc basis. We are also developing a legacy archive program to provide continuing public access to our content. If you can help us cover the costs of the transition and the development of our legacy archive program, please make a donation on thinktechaway.com. Thanks so much. Aloha.